Hello everybody, it's been forever and a day since I did my last book haul and I have quite a number of books to show you. Um, some of them are book of the month books, some of them are fairy loot books, some of them are books I got for Christmas, before Christmas and a lot of them I got from my very good friend Injeri over at Onyx Pages. Now if it is that you're like Injeri, I don't know Injeri, what are you doing with your life? If you love black speculative fiction, books that would make you think, books that you would adore, I would always say please check out Injeri's channel. She is phenomenal and amazing and so fucking brilliant. Like my friends are so cool yo and you don't know how much I love to gossip my friends. So. Um, and Jerry sent me a bunch of books that I'm really excited to get into because um, my relationship, my friendship with Jerry started when she first sent me, I participated in a Kwanzaa Reflectathon and she sent me Fifth Season which is the first book in the Broken Egg Trilogy by N.K. Jemisin and like that just cements the taste level that Jerry has and it's always high. Like if it's a recommended book get into it and so for this book one i'm going to start by going through the books and jerry sent to me um i because there are a lot of books and like my energy levels are running low these days so i won't be able to go into like full summaries of the books because you can just google the books and find that out but what i'm going to say is one thing i'm really looking forward um to the like one thing that makes me one or two or three things that make me like that i'm really looking forward to delving into with the book you know so something outside of the summary if that makes sense the first book she sent me is wild seed by octavia e butler i'm really looking forward to this because i know that she my very good friend tati over at musical tati Brittany over at melanin eclectic and sherry over at obsidian text and tangents they really really love this book like of like they love octavia e butler right and jerry and tati have an octavia e butler um, read along whereby they are reading all her books so she's a big deal and I know that the only Octavia E. Butler book I've read so far is the, the Xenogenesis series which I absolutely adore so I'm looking forward to reading Wild Seed just because this is a character with like different powers um, faced off against another character who also has immense powers and I just want to see how the story plays out. The next book I got from Injury was An Ocean of Minutes by Fia Lim. The reason why I'm really looking forward to reading this is because this is a time travel story and I have a fondness and a weakness for time travel especially because this is a time travel that is a um, time travel story that is interwoven with romance. You have two characters one of whom is really ill because of a deadly pandemic and another that's another thing. I'm like we're well, right in the middle of a global pandemic that has been going on for years so it just is a story that fits so her lover is ill with the pandemic and she agrees to be some sort of labored force and sent into the future so that he can pay for his treatment and when she gets back in the future she can't find him and it's just it's drama so i'm really looking forward to that it has time travel it has pandemic a pandemic story which is of course relevant to our present time and the author is also Canadian I don't have a lot of Canadian authors on my shelf so this would be a cool way to incorporate that the next book I got from Injeri was Asata an, auto, an autobiography by Asata Shakur I really love autobiographies because it's coming directly from the source and we all know so many like we know so little about Asata a lot of what is known about her it's often propaganda you know pushed by the by the FBI by the American government so being able to hear her story with her own words and this forward is done by Angela Davis I'm like I was just like thank you Jerry because I really 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 want to read this I also have Malcolm X's biography which I intend to read too the next book that I got from in Jerry is um, Supernova Era by Si Shin Liu this is an arc right and I really, really enjoyed the concept. Because she was telling me about it and she was like, do you want it? I was like, of course I want it. The reason why I really want to read this book is because technically this story follows like, okay, so this supernova burst and basically um, several light years away, right? And basically releases something that ensures that everybody above the age of 13 is going to die. And so it's a race against time to try and imbue these children with the knowledge to run the world. And I think that it's a very good, like the concept of it has been very intriguing 
because you know we always say children are the future generation but at the same time adults tend to treat children like they do not have the knowledge to be able to make full on decisions you know you are not yet an adult so what happens when there are no adults anymore will the children run humanity to the ground that is something that i am very intrigued by a premise i was very intrigued by so when jerry offered me this i was like yes please and yeah, I, I can't wait to read this. The next book that Injury sent me is another Octavia E. Butler novel. It's Clay's Ark, um, a Patternist novel. And I found out that the Patternist saga has several books in it. Wild Seed is one of the books in the Patternist saga. And in Clay's Ark, um, the reason why I'm really looking forward to reading this book is because there's this sort of virus going around and infecting people. And you have a man and his daughters who are captured by these people who have been infected by this virus. And is it that a case of of them escaping or them getting infected and once again we're in the middle of a global pandemic anything that has to do with viruses and infections right now it it's very, it reads very true to life and that is why i'm very intrigued by the prospect of of reading it still on october e butler i also got kindred now kindred is a beloved novel i don't think there's anybody who is a fan of octavia e butler that has not read kindred so when jerry offered me this book i was like thank you i am so excited right um and like the concept of this is basically time travel but it's the type of time travel that scares me because it is time travel to the past a lot of time travel stories are to the future which is like oh you're assuming that in the future so many of the things that exist right now would not exist you know things that basically make it dangerous to be a black woman or a black person you know you you hope that in the future it has been resolved but this this is the past dana is so somebody who is living in the present who gets sent back to the antebellum south and the, the just the concept of that terrifies me because um she goes back and forth between the present and the past she does not know what is pulling her to the past except for the fact that it's tied to this white slave owners and the the more she's pulled into the past the longer she stays there and there's that terror of will she would this become a permanent reality for her I know a lot of people who love Kindred. Kindred and Wild Seed are like two favorite Octavia e. Butler novels. And I'm really happy that I have this. So thank you, Injury. I can't wait to read it. The next book Injury sent me is The Devourers by Indra Das. And I'm I'm not gonna lie. Like the only thing that hooked me, what hooked me on this book was the premise of this person transcribing stories of creatures past. And some of those notes came from like once living human skin. The minute I heard that, I was like, skin? Like, she's transferring old stories from skin? And that was just what made me decide to pick it up. Do I understand the concept of this story? No. Do I think it's going to be creepy and weird? But in a good way, definitely. The next book that I got from Injury is Shadow Shaper Legacy by Daniel Ozil Alder. You all know I do have the Shadow Shaper series and I've not started reading it because I wanted it to be complete. And this is the third book in the trilogy. So I have all the books now and I cannot wait to read it. Um, I, I do not know what is happening in book three. I did not read the synopsis because I do not want to be spoiled. But I do know that the Shadow Shaper are basically a being. This people with powers that can basically take impressions and pass messages through art, through paintings, graffitis. And we have our lead character, Sierra, who is basically fighting this force that was haunting, or that is haunting Shadow Shapers. So that's what the basis of the story. And I have the last book in the trilogy, so now I can get to the story. When I have time! So many books, so little time. The next book Jerry sent me is Bastet's Legacy by Jamila Mill Smith. Um, this in itself is just that. That was what hooked me on it, Bastet. And you all know I love mythology and Egyptian mythology does not get enough books and does not get enough love. Um, and this basically follows a teen, a teenager who discovers that she's descended from a long line of Bastet women who have a connection to the god, the cat goddess herself, Bast. I cannot wait to read this. I just, the premise of it, just the fact that it's just Bastet. Like that was just what hooked me on it. She's also a Canadian author of Jamaican descent. So that's yet another entry on my shelf. The last two books that Injury sent me were The Good Luck Girls by um, Charlotte Nicole Davis and Sisters of Reckoning also by Charlotte Nicole Davis. These are both arcs and this is basically, yes, so she sent me The Good Luck Girls duology. I know, all I know about this 
the reason why I've always wanted to read this series is that this is set in the in the West, right? The old West and has fantasy elements and you have these five girls kicking ass and taking names who escape this pleasure welcome house and basically go on the run and are protecting each other. So it has sisterhood, it has like amazing like fantasy elements and it's all set in the old west and and jerry sent me both books i cannot wait to read this oh my god thank you jerry like ah so yeah these are the last two books that jerry sent me like perfection i also got my soul to keep by tanana reeve do um this is immortal vampires falling in love and i just i have heard so many great things about this series i think this is the first book in the series i'm not sure but this was sent to me by my amazing friend chloe over at thistle and verse and i got no way to read it like that just they had me at immortal right that that's the re that's one core reason why i want to read this book it's immortal probably a vampire wait it might not be a vampire because it's an immortal there are so many other immortal races that are not vampires so but there's a darkness to it and yeah, that was that's why I wanted to read this book and I have it. Yay! Chloe also sent me The Bells by Donnell Clayton. I just love this premise of um, the world being grey and these special people having the ability to bring out the talent and innate beauty of others. Like it's just, I find that concept very, very fascinating. And I'm really thankful that Chloe sent me this because I cannot wait to read this book. I have, like so many of my friends have read it and loved it and I just, I just, I just think that the commentary on beauty and who has the power to wield it and what it's being wielded for is just going to be very potent in this book and that's some reason why I really, 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 really want to read this book. So yeah, I have a belt. The next book is something I have anticipated since I first heard the writer talking about it on Twitter and that is Iron Widow by Jiron J. Zhao. This was sent to me by my very good friend Sarah. Sarah, you got to read this <sighs> okay i was so excited my 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 lens was all blurred out like this book the minute they mentioned it right the minute the author mentioned it on twitter and they were talking about this idea for their book i was like sign me the fuck up and now it's here and i have it in my hands and i cannot wait to read it it's just it's it just reads of so much rage right because you all know how much i love a good revenge story especially when it features women who are angry women who want to burn down the world and our lead protagonist in this wants to avenge her sister who was killed by the ace pilot because this is like a mecca story right that is inspired by the real iron widow an actual empress in chinese history and just the element of this just makes me really really excited about reading this book like i am so excited <sighs> Sarah, thank you. Your generosity. I would read this book with joy and gladness and I'm ready for the kick-ass run. I think that there's a bit of polyamory in this as well because like this book is squared. This book is poly, as polyam representation and like as angry women, as an angry girl who is killing and setting the world on fire. So many reasons why I love it. I am we don't. I also got this for Christmas as well. This is Neil Gaiman's Norse Mythology. This was sent to me by Peggy. You all know I love mythology. You all know Neil Gaiman is one of my favorite authors, hands down. I have loved him for over a decade. I think I discovered Sandman like 15 years ago and I've loved him ever since. Like my heart, my, my soul. Because that was like the first, like I read Sandman before I then read um, you know, the other Neil Gaiman books. And I just, this is a reimagining, a retelling of several Norse mythology stories told by one of the most masterful storytellers I've ever read. So it's just, it's a match made in heaven. I actually have this book on audio um, and I wanted it, I put it on my wish list for the physical copy because I wanted to do a hybrid read whenever I get around to it. And now I can do that. I can immerse myself in the story that Neil Gaiman has decided to tell. And I just, thank you so much, Peggy. I cannot wait to read this book. I cannot wait to read this book. Um, Now to the books I received, Um, but they didn't come with a note. I think it was lost somewhere in transit in getting to me. And I don't know who sent them. First of which is Kingdom of Souls by Rena Baron. I have wanted to read this book forever. This has a witch doctor who 
doesn't have any powers, which already had me intrigued, but then she had to trade the years of her life in order to get the power to solve a mystery and save kids that are vanishing. And there were just like several layers of that that I really loved. But what hooked me on this book and the reason why I really wanted this book is one, the cover, and two, witch doctors. Witch doctors are a big deal in Nigeria, um, especially in Yoruba culture, Igbo culture. Like it's they, they are the the intermediary between us and the gods. And like having a book that senses that, that senses someone like that, just makes me very happy. So yes, I cannot wait to read it. It is Kingdom of Souls. And you know, it says, I once laughed at stories about demons. Now I know that one may walk in my shadow. Just that, the concept of that, there's a snake at the back. Like, what? Wow, what, what is not to love? What is not to love? Whoever sent me this, I don't know who you are, but thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. I also got sent Monstrous Volume 2 because you all know I have Monstrous Volume 1. That was a gift, and now I have this, and I don't know who sent this to me, but like just <gasps> to follow my Ika story of her coming into her own and like accepting who she is, and the art is still is still stunning. Like Thank you. Whoever sent me this, thank you. Monstrous volume 2! Now moving on to the fairy loop books I've gotten in the recent times. Um, the Coldest Touch by Isabel Sterling, who wrote, um, who is the author of This Witches Don't Burn. Um, it's gay, it's sapphic, you have a girl who can um, see the death of others but cannot prevent it. You have a vampire who's been sent to help her train her powers. They both fall in love. It's sapphic, it's gay, it's amazing. It's The Coldest Touch. This is also another fairy loot book, uh, Makila Lucia's Year of the Reaper. It's someone in search of the killer, the plague is wiping out the country. The one thing that does have me intrigued about it is because this this has like royal courtly intrigue, which is why I really do want to read it. It's not high on my list of books I want to read very, very soon, but the courtly intrigue, because you all know how much I like all the backstabbing and the manipulation that goes on in all this court drama type um stories historical fantasy stories so yeah year of the reaper and the last fairy loot book only a monster by vanessa len i just the concept of the fact that one this is an urban fantasy this girl who did not know that she's born into a family of monsters um set between this like draw between okay trying to figure out her history and all of that this hero who whose who, whose entire life purpose is to kill monsters and by extension her even though she already has a crush on him this other heir of a monster family who is feuding with hers with her family i just like so many like there's the level devil there's the urban fantasy element which i always love because i love urban fantasy stories how fantasy is able to be woven onto like you know actual uh, actual reality you add that element in with the element of um in with the element of you know um enemies to lovers feuding families like both of us from feuding families but we fall in love and then there's the old enemies to lovers part of um it is my responsibility to kill your kind and i'm falling in love with you you're falling in love with me like so many layers of drama i want to read this book this month i'm moving on to my book of the month fix right first is the keeper of night by kylie Lee baker this i i the minute i read the synopsis of this i said i wanted this book i needed this book um Shinigamis. I've loved Shinigami since Bleach, yes, and Soul Eater. I've loved the concept of death itself since I read Sandman by Neil Gaiman. I think I've, I've spoken a lot about my fascination with death as a character. Um, and, you know, this book actually has layers of that, right? You have her, you have this girl who is half Japanese Shinigami and half British Reaper and cannot fit into both worlds, who, who, who gets a chance to serve the goddess of death in Japan and just... The layers of that, the layers of that, and this is what hooked me. The back of this is, I am too dangerous to live any longer. It is written in the book of Anko, decreed by the High Reaper himself. Death will come to find me, but I will no longer be there. Like, just the keeper of night. The keeper of night, people. Like, spectacular. I, I, mm, yes, thank you. The next book is the X. X by Erin Sterling. I chose this book because I'm like, um, I have had one too many breakups where uh, I've, I've wished I had magic to curse some people out, right? And our lead character in this does just that. And she thinks, oh yeah, sure, you know, maybe a couple of bad air days, you know, a zipper keeps dropping down and everyone keeps saying, oh, your fly's down. You know, little things like that. She forgets about it. 
Fast forward years later and um, the curse, the hex she cast is very strong and is getting in the way of her partnering with her ex um, to save the town because her hex keeps getting in the way. Like the layer of that is it's comedy, it's fun, it's amazing. I, mm, yes, definitely. I, I do not, I cannot wait. <laughs> this is going to be so funny. I want to read it. The next book is People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. I have heard so many good things about this, right? And this was the book of the year finalist last year. And I know people who have read this book and love it. It's two seemingly different people who have been best friends since college. And then they always go for one week of summer vacation together, even though their lives are vastly apart. And their last vacation, things go disast disastrously wrong. And now um, our lead character, Poppy, is trying to make things better by have convincing Alex, her best friend, to go on one last trip, right? And basically try to fix things. I'm like, they fell in love. That's probably the drama. And I'm here for it. Also, I've not gone on vacation since COVID hit, so being able to read up about other people on vacation might just, you know, cheer me up. That's another reason why I picked this. So. Next is The Holiday Swap by Maggie Knox. This is an holiday novel, so I probably would try to keep it to read it end of the year this year. Um, there are so many books I want to get to, so it does seem like a perfect December read. One of them, one it's a twin swap story, and I love twin swap stories. Like, I have loved it since The Parent Trap with, with Lindsay Lohan, like, not the original Parent Trap, the Lindsay Lohan one, because that was the first one I watched. And I just, I just love this concept. You have the same adult twins, one of them gets hit on the head, you know, loses her sense of taste and smell, and it has this important show, cooking show, she's filming so she gets her twin sister who is also trying to escape the life back home um with all the pressing debt and all the responsibility to swap with her but what happens when they also meet the men that they love like whilst they are playing the other twin like just it just reads drama and i'm just absolutely in love with this as a concept as a story because when you're tossing twin swap with love romances then you said do they love me or do they love my twin and also when we swap back how are we going to make this relationship work like it's just a recipe for drama and disaster and i'm here for it the next book on my list is love and other disasters by anita kelly i just one i love cooking shows cooking shows are my absolute weakness you know master chef um chopped um uh, you know um hell's kitchen you know just sign me up especially the competitive cooking shows right and in love and other disasters that's just what we get it's a cooking show right it's a cooking competition and two of the contestants are basically going to fall in love right and just the drama of that is awesome the fact that there's also a non-binary character in this book love interest in this book or a non-binary main character who is also the love interest in this book and it's written by a non-binary author like just several it has several takes for me that just work for me and it's going to i know it's going to be queer it's just going to be deliciously queer and i love it so yeah it's it's cooking show it's love it's going to be drama and i'm living for it now moving on to the books i bought and i'm really excited for these three books first is the scum villain self-saving system volume one by my love, my heart, my queen, the goddess, Mozian Tongzu, MXTX. Now, I am a big MXTX fan. I've been a fan of her works for years. And when I found out that our stories, because I have all of them online, and when I found out that, oh, you know, she's actually having it officially translated to English and it's going to be published, I'm like, I am giving her all my money. And SVSSS, as we popularly call it in the fandom, is a first novel. In fact, you just say, no, this is the only book of hers that I have not yet read. Uh, I don't know why, even though I like Isekai. Isekai is transmigration stories. I love, oh my God, one of my favorite anime, manga, like novel is an isekai novel and mm, but yeah so this we're following lovingi who is the um the main protagonist of a trashy web novel right and shen wan who is reading the novel and is like this character is trash until he dies and is transmigrated into that world to inhabit the body of lovingi's teacher shen ching chu which would be okay if not for the fact that his character, the person he is now, was an absolute dick to Liu Bingyi. And now he has a little, he has just a little time to, you know, change and transform and basically try and be a better teacher to Liu Bingyi so that Liu Bingyi does not kill him because Shen Yuan is now in Shen Chin Chu's body and there's drama. I just, 
I live for it. Scum villain system. Scum villain self-saving system is just going to be hilarious. It's a meta commentary on fandom. I just... MXTX is bae. She's queen. She's bae. Um, next on my list is Evan's Official Blessing Volume 1, also by MXTX. As I like to call it, Changwon Sifu. This is bae. Bae! Okay, so... Two of my absolute favorite MXTS novels, and this is one of them, is finally translated into English. Um, I'm, I'm so excited. Okay, but I forgot to mention, see, like this has a lot of illustrations and art. Like, I just, it's a collector's, I'm going to collect, I intend to collect all the books because. MX takes deserves all the money and all my support because I want more. I wanted to write, I wanted to keep writing more books because I love her stories. So that is the self-serving, um, the scum villain self-serving system. And like I said, Tiangin Sifu, um, Evan's official blessing. This follows Zelian, uh, a mortal prince who is, you know, strong and smart and beautiful and amazing and kind and who ascends to godhood due to his deeds. Um, but you know, just at the same way they rise, he also fell and he fell several times. And now he's risen, he's ascended to godhood for the third time. All the gods are pissed is is also broke, is also kind of broke and there's a, there are so many layers and levels to why he is the person he is, uh, why, he, why his story is turning out the way it is and I love the story. It's MXTS's largest novel and I just, I love it because it means Sanlang, Ulian is just, Ulian as a pairing is big. Ah, watch Heng! I don't want to spoil anything because this is only volume one, but yes, I have it. And look at the art. Ah, like, of course, the cover, but also... Zelian and Wacheng! Okay, so, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an epic love story, 800 years in the making between a god and a, between a martial god. Huh? And a ghost king and I'm just mwah, spectacular and the last book is like I said I told you that there are two of my absolute favorite MXTX novel like they are tied ah! <laughs> the grand master of demonic cultivation also known as Moda Zushi this is my favorite <sighs> Wang Zian Wang Zian Wang Zian we have Wei Wu Zian who is a prodigy and selfless and noble and amazing and who basically turns the tide of war by discovering a particular path um, but then eventually people's admiration turns to fear and they turn against him and this is just basically a who done it trying to solve mysteries falling in love and just being amazing because Wei Wu Zian and Lang Wangji are just perfect together and just Yes, and of course, this is also a resurrection type story because Wei Wuzian dies. Yeah, this is not a spoiler. The story starts by saying Wei Wuzian is dead and then he comes back to life. And that is where things pick up because we go, like, we, we move between the present and the past to understand the story and to actually unravel the thread because there are a lot of threads to be unraveled in this story. I just, ah, I love this. I, I love this so fucking much. And this is the first volume. Uh... This is a larger heart. I don't, I don't think like, I don't see, this is not my Wei Wuzian, even though he has the ribbon and the black hair and the carefree smile and he's holding Emperor's smile and this is not my Lang Guanji, but like, I think I prefer the art on Evan's official blessing to this, but I'm sincerely hoping that, you know, it gets better because it's going to be a lot of volumes, but the books, the stories are big. MXTX tells like really long stories. I think the shortest of all our books is definitely self, um, scum villain self-serving system because that's the shortest. The long, the largest, like I said, is Evan's official blessing. And that's 11 volumes, so it's a lot, but yeah, I have them. Um, yeah, that is my book haul. Let me know which of these books like that I've just talked about is one, a book you've already read and you know, wants me to pick up ASAP to a book you would recommend or three, a book you're really looking forward to. Drop it down in the comments down below. I am really interested in knowing that. But yeah.
that is going to be the end of the video if you've not yet hit the like button please do so if you're not yet subscribed please please subscribe and turn all notifications on that prompt you know with the bell so you don't miss any of my new videos and i will see you next time until then stay passionate stay nerdy stay loving yourself bye